Hey guys, welcome back out to the channel. Kyle here. And tonight we are going to be doing something really fun. We're going to go ahead and get this uh, short block done on our 1904cc Volkswagen engine that we're building for uh, uh, our second buggy and to use when we go to the No Name Nationals here in just over, what, a month and a half? Anyway, we'll get there. Uh, but, um, you know, I was going to work on this earlier today and uh, ended up going to the water park. So I, before I go to bed, I'm going to get this thing cinched up and ready to go. So um, where I left you, I think, I went ahead and got this crankshaft all ready to go and uh, cam and all those other good things. But I got my table of goodies back here and a good attitude and I am ready to get this done. Um, now I just had this, uh, this case bored out for uh, you know a little bit bigger uh, pistons so we're gonna put some 90.5 piston and cylinders in there and uh, ended up boring out the heads as well but where I left you in the last video I uh, basically explained that and I said that I was probably gonna have to do some clearancing because we're going with a stroker crank and that is quite the case here so I was gonna show you what I had to do I didn't um, really film any of this stuff but uh, to get this crankshaft in here um you know i'm using a 74 millimeter crank it's a uh, forged uh counterweighted balanced crank very good crankshaft but i have chosen uh to use stock uh rods and it's fine to do uh whenever you have a little bit bigger stroke uh it pushes things further that way so where you're normally with your 69 stroke, you'd be missing all this stuff. Um, with a 74, you're going to be touching in a few areas. So that's what I had to do. I had to clearance. Um, now you can use different length rods. Um, I can't remember what length they are. But I went the cheaper way and I used stock and that's fine because see, I'm, I'm actually going to be putting this engine on a rail. So I'm not worried about room. You know, if I was sticking this in a Volkswagen Beetle, I might use different pistons and different rod length. That way it kind of compensates for the extra stroke, but I didn't do that here. So you have to uh, pay for that with clearancing. So here's what I've done. I've clearanced in here. Took me one of those, um, I guess I took my air tool and a few other little things, uh, some bur burring tools and did that. And this wasn't too bad. This was just barely going to hit. But up here, I sort of had to raise raise the roof a little bit. And the big daddy was, this was the main problem right here. Right where the camshaft and all that goes. And uh, this took a little bit of, of time to do. and But I got it and I sort of put the uh, crank in there just to sort of verify. And I haven't since I've cleaned it up and done some stuff, I haven't really verified. So I guess we're going to verify that tonight as we put this in, but I'm, I feel pretty uh, positive it's going to fit. Long story short, um, I've kind of, I haven't filmed, I didn't film any of that for you because it's just tedious stuff, but uh, long story short, I've kind of gotten a, a head start here for us. Um, I'm the type of guy, you don't have to put this distributor drive in, but I prefer doing that beforehand. Um, and then clamping it down, uh, clamping your distributor down that way you sort of get this set um, where the official timing mark should be uh, some guys have tools that you can put those in there with and uh, it's not for me I don't have that tool and uh, it can be kind of cumbersome to do it so I'm doing it this way uh, so I got that set it is where top dead center door to be I went ahead and I put in my cam uh, the lifters and all that stuff um, uh, in place. Got one. Go ahead and went ahead and got the cam bearings in, uh, both here and down there, and this uh, center main. So I'm ready to set this dude in here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in, kind of get this lubed up, set it in there, and make sure it all fits nice. All right. So I made me a little lever welded an old um, like a nut uh, one of these old pulley nuts that it, uh, I wasn't ever going to use again welded a bar onto it, my little handle and so I am basically slowly 
trying to keep these guys up and I'm just rotating it make sure we don't have any um, interference I mean really you want to make sure that those are centered on the crankshaft to verify that and uh, I have a couple of close ones but it is clearing it by plenty so I am going to call that at least on this side of this case successful let um, me get it back around so that we're top dead center again uh, and I know that I can verify that by just where this is a good re another good reason to have your uh, distributor in place okay that looks good I'm gonna leave it there and uh, we'll go ahead and get this uh, camshaft uh, that I have kind of put together already ready to go it's a scat c35 not a uh, t tiny um, camshaft but it's not a super super aggressive one either because uh, we're not making this necessarily a racing motor uh, I'll go ahead and get these uh, lubed up and set it in place and we'll get that much closer to getting the uh, the case put back together alright guys well I got the uh, lifters and all that good stuff sort of lubed up with our assembly lube and same thing with the cam as you can see now uh, one thing I just noticed is that I am getting low on batteries on this thing I didn't uh, charge it up before I left today but uh, anyways uh, I say that to say this um, I probably won't be covering a ton of what I'm doing uh, you know step by step in fact if you're if you're following me for just a step-by-step -step procedure, you're probably following the wrong channel. Uh, I certainly wouldn't steer you wrong, but there's lots of other great um, tutorials on how to do this. But hopefully maybe you'll learn something just from the fact that, uh, you know, what I've had to do to clearance for this sort of thing. That way, if you're thinking about building you something with a 74 stroke, uh, be it 1904 or uh, whatever else, uh, at least you know what you got to go through to make that right if that is especially if you want to use a stock rod so anyway I'm gonna set this cam in here there's actually um, on the uh, cam gear there are two little dots and those two little dots have to go around in other words this, this thing has to be centered between those two dots so I am going to find those I've had to turn this crank around to do that and uh, there it is right there. I gotta, I gotta pay attention for a second while I set that. Um, I tell you what, I'm actually having a good time tonight. Um, I haven't done this sort of work in like oh, at least five years, maybe six. I can't remember when the last build was that I did, but uh, it has been. Quite some time actually. There we go. I've got that sandwich in there. So with that being said, I'm gonna rotate this just a smidge. Oh, try not to hit my cam. Come on. Got something binding here. There we go. Just make sure it's still in there. Because I've got to set these um in their saddles while keeping that together. All right, she's still in that. All right, so I'm just gonna let her draw in just slightly while I rotate. That's how that needs to go. Okay, let me verify for a second. I know it's probably in the picture. Verify that. We are still inside. Yep, there they are. There's the two dots. And there's that main dot. Perfect. That's what I wanted. All right. <coughs> Before I forget, I'll lube this up just a little bit. Now, uh, lots of different types of lubes to use. I make my own. I use mostly Lucas Oil. Um, it's a, I can't remember what weight it is, um, but it's really thick, real thick oil. I use that, uh, but also 
a little mix of Marvel Mystery Oil. I use Marvel Mystery Oil for a lot of things. And uh, if you mix it with this assembly lube, it actually kind of helps, uh, at least in my opinion, um, thin it just slightly. So I want this to stick, you know, in case you never know how long things will sit once you put them together. And so that's basically what I am doing. So here's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm rotating this to make sure this thing doesn't jump out of the, the uh, saddle bearings. Because if, if it's doing that, you've got a problem with your um, um, gear. Sometimes these gears just don't mesh right with each other. Um, sometimes they're just, you gotta get a different cam gear. Luckily, I haven't seen that yet. It looks like it's coming together pretty good. All right. This is looking good. I find this enjoyable and relaxing. I'm no engine builder, for sure. But it feels like it's working nicely. I don't see any binds thus far. So we're going to be getting close to uh, putting this other half on. Lubricating here, get that. Some more here. I don't want to go too crazy on my camshaft journals because um, I'm basically going to have to um, back here get some silicone and put in this little plug at the end. So I just want to make sure that, that looks good. Okay. Everything's rotating rather nice. Alright, I feel good about this. Alright. I think we're good to go start lubing up the uh, um, the lifters down here on this other case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that since I'm running on batteries. Alright, we took our aviation style sealer and went around both pieces of the case. Trying to get as much as we can, uh, but not lobbing it on too thick. I've actually I've probably put it too thick on in a few places, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll be okay. Anyways, let's uh, get this dude together so we can go on and get to bed. Very important. I made some of these little um, sort of these cam lifter holders by taking some old. Uh, clothes hangers and got those in there that way when I turn it upside down it won't fall so let's uh, let's hope that it'll work alright make sure you go on in there okay so it's always t so I got everything got my plug in cam plug I think I think that's it all right, let's get to uh, sealing these things. All right, I'm having to work kind of fast here. I'm using my Ultra Black. Like I said, I go in between sealers. Use my Ultra Black on these uh, large head studs. I'm sorry, not head studs. Um, case nuts uh, by coating that and putting the washers down first. I want to work quickly. That way... Uh, I can get this thing sealed up and I'm probably going to go ahead and um, put down or tighten it up just by uh, a wrench first just kind of get her snugged then I'll come back in and torque it so I think 25 foot pounds is the the proper torque we'll see I'm getting too much of this on the threads I don't want to do that Anyways, uh, put that on there. Okay, that ought to help seal it a little bit anyways. Um, I like to pull it over the top too. That probably won't make a hill of beans worth of difference, but we'll do it. Just 
just make a mess. <laughs> Alright, let me go ahead and finish that up. Alright, I'm going to use the old school torque wrench and torque these six main case bolts to 25 foot pounds. I've got uh, another style torque wrench, you know, that has a little clicker on it, but sometimes I just don't trust that with lower torque values. Now, if you get it to like 50 or 60, it'll click okay, but you know, the lower ones just aren't too darn good. That's what I get for buying Chinese crap, I guess. This just I feel more comfortable with. That's what they used to use back in the day, and why not me too? Okay, 25 foot pounds. Good. Huh, we're all torqued right there. Well gang, sure enough, the old camera ran out of batteries. I didn't get to finish filming. But you know what? We didn't really miss anything. Uh, all I did really was go in and uh, torque down our case nuts uh, up and down and all that sort of thing. And I went ahead and I uh, got this um, oil pump and all that stuff on there nothing major uh, you know she spins over okay uh, you know relatively freely and uh, I think all that's good when I get back uh, when I get back from the church house it's it's Sunday morning uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shim up this flywheel bolt the flywheel on and we'll check our um, I want to say backlash, but that's not really the right word. In play, that's it. In play, that's what I want to do. Uh, we we don't want a lot of in play. We got to have a little bit, but not a lot. And we'll go ahead and bolt that on, check it out, and probably go ahead and install after cleaning up this oil sump. Get that dude installed on there, and the front pulley. Maybe we'll go ahead and get the um, the studs put in there for the case. For the barrels and that sort of thing that way we can check our deck height and make sure we are within spec of, of what we need for our compression all right let's do it well gang uh picking back up where we left off i think i kind of explained a second ago uh you know where we were where we left it um got a little confession to make for you right here um so things <laughs> things in life aren't always the way they would seem and that ex that's exactly what happened with this engine um i just rotated it there for you a second ago and everything looked like it was not i mean it was doing fantastic and everything well it was except for one little bitty bitty thing so i clearance all pretty much everything in here and i spun it around and just you know to make sure it, it wasn't hit anywhere and uh, I really wasn't feeling anything now you got to keep these things straight right as if you know it's going to appear you know centered whenever your piston is moving up and down well I kind of played around with it a little bit and I noticed once I did I was feeling just the slightest little bump right in here something about something about it was not going right right there and one other little place uh over here on the opposite end here was the issue so see that guy right there that was getting really close up on that spigot and it just barely 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 bumped it same thing over here now oddly enough all these other spigots were fine not a not a darn problem whatsoever so to speak of it touching not even close but for whatever reason, this particular case, the way it was casted, um, right there and down here, it was touching. So, 
Needless to say, I was sick with myself. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I don't want to tear this thing apart. So I um, took a break from it from, for about half a day. Came back. I thought, you know what? If I got to take it apart, I got to take it apart. But I'm going to try something before we do. So here's what I did. I thought, if I can clearance this with it still in there, I'm going to try it. We'll just see what happens. So what I did was I made a little plate. I stuck that plate down there and I just packed everything with, um, you know, shop towels and that sort of thing. And then I got the, um, got that out and along with a little riggery right here, a little tube and a vacuum, and I just took my time and I just vacuumed that as I were slowly, slowly taking it out here and on the other side. And I'll tell you what, I was pleasantly surprised. It actually worked. Uh, there was very, very, very minimal pieces that got by. And so I'm elated that it worked. I had to, I had to just kind of clean a few other little pieces of dust that, you know, sort of went in there. But the vacuum got about 90 eight percent of it to be honest with you so i didn't have to split the case again if i did have to do that it wasn't in the world but if i could get by it i certainly would so anyways um i digress she's spinning like a top right now feels really really good so i'm finally now going to work on getting my uh fly wheel on with the uh engine off the engine stand uh i'm going to go ahead and try to put on this uh Lightened flywheel with our chromoly uh, flywheel nut there. And to do this, we got to make sure there's proper backlash or in play, I guess you'd call it. I keep saying backlash, I'm thinking of transmission stuff. Uh, uh, proper in play, and we want to shoot for three to five thousandths. Um, this engine, these are the three shims that came off of it whenever I got this thing in a, in a load of parts. So they say try three, so I'm going to just, why not, just try these three and see what happens. So, stick those babies right on there. And uh, this thing can be a little awkward to put on, so this will be the first time it's ever been made it up to this. Uh, this is my an 8 dowel crank is a really good crank and I think it'll keep us from tearing up stuff. These are cumbersome so I'm going <laughs> to pause it while I work on it. Sometimes you just have to get the right line of sight. So that's exactly what I did here. They only fit one way as far as I know. Um, I think one is a little off from the other so that it helps keep it uh, alright. So, Anyways, on we go. Technically, this is not the right tool to use, but I get about 250 foot-pounds out of it, and we're just wanting to check uh, the end play, so it'll work for what we're trying to do. Okay, first thing we'll try to do is see if this thing will even turn. All right, well, I just tightened up that uh, flywheel nut, and uh, I put those three shims in there just to see where we would arrive at, and I didn't film any further because I actually... I could push in and I could feel a slight bit of uh, slop so I could tell that our our play was probably gonna be a little bit bigger than what it should be so I went ahead and measured it anyways with the dial gauge I think it came out to 12 thousandths which is it's, that's way too much so we needed at least another shim in there so I went over to my spare parts bin and I got another shim from another engine and I stuck her in there so this is what we're getting right here. I've got this um, flywheel all pulled back. And a lot of times I do that with a pry bar and then another screwdriver. So I can't probably pull that in and show you at the same time, but uh, we got about, we're, we're on the 50 mark right there. Let's see what happens when we 
pusher in. There we go. So we get five. We whoa. Well, I did have it on. Let's try that again. Just trust me on it. I've tried it a couple times. Um, we had um, five thousandths in play on it. There we go. There. That's better. Five thousandths in play, which is uh, within spec because it's supposed to be three to five thousandths. Uh, and I haven't even put oil on those, so I would assume once I put oil on those um, that it will at least stay that. May even go down to four thousandths in play, which would have been great. So that's good. And so I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and finish. Uh, I'm gonna take this back out and put my seal in there, oil seal, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the front pulley on. And tomorrow morning's getting late, so tomorrow morning I'm going to go ahead and get up and put on the oil sump and get the studs ready, and that will be the entire short block, and then we'll be ready to throw the um, I guess look at deck height. So, anyways, see you when we're done with that. Use an old oil seal to put this new oil seal on is the best way to drive her in. That way, you don't damage the old one. And you get get it in good and even. Sometimes it'll go in there flush. Sometimes it'll go in further. We'll just have to see what this one's gonna do. I tell you what, this old one is filthy though. I can tell you that. Looks like. Uh, this old filter was, somebody put some silicone around it, I mean, you can do that, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't really have to, that rubber will do it. I think I'm in there about as far as I can go, but we'll give her another couple of wax just to see. Okay. Feel confident that that is done. So we'll just go ahead and oil the inside of that out and put our uh, flywheel back in and we'll be in business. And there you have it, folks. I got the short block done. Flywheel's on there, torque down, and the front pulley. So I'm going to clean up my nasty old mess here and get on to bed. And uh, tomorrow, we will get back to doing uh, the studs and uh, check that kind of So, till that video, we will see you.